So we have discussed almost every aspect of lysosome and we have discussed all its functions also. We have studied endocytosis, we have discussed phagocytosis, we have discussed autophagy, we have discussed autolysis and almost every aspect we have studied. This is a brief diagram that is explaining to most of these mechanisms. For example, phagocytosis. In a phagocytosis, when food enters inside, it enters in form of solid particles. Say, for example, bacteria. ETC, when they enter inside cell, they form a body that's called phagosome. These phagosomes are to be digested inside cell with the help of intracellular digestion. And when these phagosomes fuse with a primary lysosome which contains enzymes, they form a complex functional structure and that complex functional structure is called phag called secondary lysosome. And when this secondary lysosome is found, enzymes start performing their functions and once intracellular digestion is completed, the lysosome again forms its structure called primary lysosome. Similarly, when food enters in form of a endocytosis, it forms body. And this body is termed in the endosomes. And what are endosomes? Endosomes are body. They contain food in form of liquid or in form of solid. When endocytosis takes place, food enters inside and it forms endosome. These endosomes do also fuse with the primary lysosomes. And when they fuse with the primary lysosome, they again form a functional structure of uh, secondary lysosome and secondary lysosome performs its function and once digestion is taken place they can assume the structure of primary lysosome. There was another mechanism that we were studying also that was autophagy. Autophagy is completely separate mechanism that we explained. The autophagy takes place under certain conditions and these conditions are when there is a food deficiency in a cell, cell starts eating its own organelles. There was another reason given certain conditions when cell is performing particular function, the number of organelles is increased. Say for example in case of exercise, mitochondria brings that num uh, lysosome brings the number of mitochondria down by digesting the excess number of mitochondria. Similarly when in cell organelles are now functional, and they are one of lysosome can also destroy them as well. This all takes place by a process called autophagy. In autophagy, the organ that is to be destroyed is surrounded by a membrane, and that membrane is provided provided by endoplasmic reticulum. This again forms a vesicle that fuses with the primary lysosome. It again forms functional secondary lysosome, and that organ is are digested. This, this is how cell starts as organism called autophagy. Similarly, there is another process. Autolysis is a completely a separate process. Among the functions of lysosome, autolysis is a complete separate process that is related to the death of cells. Sometime during developmental processes, when cells are continuously dividing, and they are adding up to form an organ. This continuous formation of organs, when once is done, an organ is produced. After the complete development of a particular organ, it is necessary that the division should stop. And cells must not start adding so that the development of organs is a proper and it's not uh, defected. And to confirm that, body has mechanisms, body that only produces cells, but body destroys cells as well. The, the, the death of cell takes place by two mechanisms we have studied. Necrosis, that's accidental death of cells by any factor. If cells die, we call it necrosis. There is another process that's called apoptosis. And apoptosis is a death of a cell which is programmed. It is as per the genetic information where there are certain genes that are activated. To destroy certain kind of cells, genes activate, genes produce different kind of mechanisms, they stimulate enzymes. These enzymes ensure the death of particular cells which are no more required to body. And to this, to this death of a cell, 
we call apoptosis. In order to carry out apoptosis, lysosomes perform this function. Lysosomes, in order to destroy cell, they burst and they release their digestive enzymes. And when these digestive enzymes are released, they destroy all organelles of cell and finally cell dies. So this process is another process that's called autolysis. But when lysosome fails to perform the function of intracellular digestion, say for example, food that enters inside lysosome inside cell, it is to be digested with the help of lysosome. But if lysosomes are not performing their functions, they are lacking enzymes and they, are, they can't carry out intracellular digestion, that results into certain problems. That results into certain diseases. And these diseases are called lysosome storage disorders. For example, when food enters in form of liquid, in form of, sorry, in form of lipids, in form of carbohydrates, the food in any form and enters inside cell. In a cell, there are lysosomes present, they are containing variety of enzymes. And these enzymes will digest to lipids, they will digest to carbohydrates, and they, they will digest almost to every form of food that enters inside cell. How can lysosomes carry out this function? And where from, where from lysosomes get these old enzymes? We have studied a mechanism. Every cell has a set of genes. And these genes code different kind of proteins and they are modified to form enzymes. Therefore, we say okay, the lysosomes get their enzymes from genes, from hereditary material. So if an organism is normal, he is having all his genes normal and all these genes are coding for normal proteins. And when these proteins are produced, they are stored in a lysosome. And when lysosome is having almost every form of enzyme, it can digest all kinds of food. But due to certain reasons, when genetic material undergoes a kind of mutation, or if there is any other continental problem, where lysosomes lack enzymes. And when enzymes are absent in lysosome, they definitely won't be able to carry out their function of intercellular digestion. And when they can't carry out their mechanism, their function, food starts accumulating inside, lys in, inside lysosomes. Food starts accumulating in form of lipids. Food starts accumulating in form of carbohydrates. And when food starts accumulating in a lysosome, lysosome starts enlarging in size, and which finally alters to the functions of cell. And when functions of cells are altered, functions of cells are disturbed, cells collectively make tissues and tissues make organ and that collectively affects to the functions of the organ and when organs are not performing their functions they are they are resulting into a major problems in the body of an organism and when they result into the in, 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 in a certain kind of problems we have termed them diseases and these diseases are because of the storage of food we have termed them as an lysosomal storage disorders for example when food starts accumulating because this storage can take place in any organ of the body it can take place uh, in a spleen it can take place anywhere in any organ of the body it can take place in brain spleen etc so in, in a very organ where this this accumulation is taking place that organ is defective that organ uh, the organ fails to perform its function and disease takes place and therefore we have termed them different types of diseases that are caused by lysosomes. The lysosome disorders can affect our liver, they can affect our spleen, they can affect our brain also, and they can result in major problems, they result into major diseases, and these diseases occur. Lysosome storage disease. So lysosomal storage disorders, or just explain in this chart to make it easy for everyone to understand. As I said, lysosome storage disorders are many. As per federal, they have discussed there are around 20 different types of lysosomal disorders. And some of the sources do also say there are 40 different types of lysosomal disorders. But we are, we are explaining three most important lysosomal disorders that are discussed in our textbooks also. 
are more common kinds of lysosomal disorders. And these are Thysage, Gaucher's, and Krebs lysosomal disorders. I will categorize them in order to make things easy for everyone to understand. For example, the first disorder is called Thysage disorder. In a thysate disorder, disorders, we, are, we will have to explain whether it's an autosomal recessive disorder or it's another problem or sex linked or ETC. Most of them are autosomal recessive disorders and this is also autosomal recessive disorder and this recessive disorder belongs to chromosome 15. And on a chromosome 15, there is a gene present that codes for enzyme. And the name of enzyme is called exos amine -DS -A. And if gene is present on a chromosome, this enzyme is produced. And when this enzyme is produced, it can digest this form of food that's called ganglionocytes. And when this, this food is digested, it's not accumulated. But in case of disorder, in case of thysage, this gene is defected and this enzyme is not produced and when this enzyme is not produced food is accumulated in tissues and when this food is accumulated in tissues which tissues this food can accumulate food accumulates in a brain in a retina and in different body organs and when food is accumulated in all these parts it causes several problems it causes functional anomalies in these organs and what sort of symptoms they can produce that's its symptoms of loss of motor skill. It can result into seizures. It can produce spots in IETC. Movements or uh, I mean the movement in a problem also takes place and the loss of vision. These are symptoms that are caused by thysate. This is another problem. This is a disease caused by lysosome. Another lysosomal storage disorder is a Gaucher, Gaucher's disorder. In a Gaucher's disorder, we say this is also an autosomal disorder. And in a Gaucher's disorder, it belongs to a chromosome number 1. These things are easy to make you understand. Chromosomal positions help you understand. So, the other disease is a safe case called Gaucher's disease that is present on chromosome number 1. This results into the deficiency of an enzyme at glucosidase. This is also termed as a glucoserigrosidase. And this glucoserigrosidase enzyme, when is absent, is results in the in the accumulation of a serigrosides. Cerebro, as I mean, I mean glucoserigrosides. The deficiency of uh, these enzymes results into the into, into the accumulation of food and this food is termed as a glucocerebroside. And when glucocerebroside is accumulated, in which organs it can accumulate? It can accumulate in a liver, it can accumulate in the spleen, it can accumulate in a bone marrow, in a brain, in a different body parts it gets accumulated. And when the accumulation of all these takes place, in, in uh, accumulation of this form of food takes place in all these organs, it causes a problem, it causes a disease, and the disease is termed as a Gaucher's disease. And this disease, what are the symptoms of this disease? Spleen and liver enlarge. Eye movement is disturbed and the spots are produced, red spots are produced on eyes. Lungs problem sometimes also an organism, organism faces extremely tired. The extreme tiredness is also one of the Symptoms, symptoms of the Gaucher's disease. So this is another more common problem that is uh, that is also a autosomal uh, and lysosomal storage disorder. The last disorder that I'm going to explain that is Krebs disorder, Krebs disease, Krebs lysosomal storage problem. This is also another autosomal disorder, and this belongs to a chromosome number 14. And in this problem. In this problem, a gene that codes for a particular enzyme is defected. And when this enzyme is absent, this enzyme results into the accumulation of a food. And that food is called galactocerebroside. And when galactocerebrosides get accumulated, 
in a cell, it results problem. Where it gets accumulated as it says here, it would say that takes place in a brain. In case of Krebs disease, gene present on chromosome number 14, when goes defected, it fails to code for a particular enzyme. And when this enzyme is absent, food is not digested and food is accumulated in form of galactocerebroside in a brain. And when food in form of galactocerebroside gets accumulated in a brain, it causes a problem called Krebs disease. And this Krebs disease produces several kind of symptoms. And these symptoms include muscle spasm, movement of muscles is not controlled, and it's not easy. It, it faces several problems. Organisms face unnecessarily, babies face unnecessarily uh, problems and irritabilities. They, they keep crying, continuous, never-ending crying and feeding difficulties. Children's baby has a problem in a feeding. This is called feeding problems. Similarly, arteries decline, gradual decline of arteries is also one of the symptoms. The arteries get declined and head control. Baby lacks control on head. The movement of head. These are different symptoms that are related to the Krebs disease. There are other diseases also, a Hunter's disease, a Frabi disease, and there are several other diseases also. But I have tried to focus the diseases that are, uh, that are discussed in our books. So this is how lysosome is.